stats right here. I got a few questions about dating in college. This video is brought to you by Grammarly. Right now, I'm going to the outlet mall in order to find a new backpack. Okay, I think right now, blue is the first pick, but we'll come back. Oh, it does not kind of spawn. Does it look kind of small? I feel like it looks kind of small. Nothing here. Next place. Next place. Hi guys, so I had the beginning of my Q&A filmed at the mall, but the background noise was too loud, so I'm redoing it here. Essentially, there were two backpacks that I liked. I liked the blue one and the brown one, so I put them both on a poll on my Instagram, and my family and I got some matcha lattes while we were waiting for the poll to be done. But yeah, I'll do some questions right now. So, hi guys, my name is Andrew Kim. My birthday is October 8th, 2003. I was born in Atlanta, Georgia, and I grew up in Minnesota. Right before college, my family moved to Texas, which is where I now live. My MBTI is INFJ. It used to be ENFJ, but it changed recently. My my favorite drink is a matcha latte. My favorite K-drama is Our Beloved Summer. I really like the main character in that show and the artwork. I follow the artist for that show on Instagram. And my favorite anime is the movie Your Name or Kimi no Nawa. And I film all my vlogs on my phone. And the reason that I went backpack shopping was if you saw my last vlog, I got robbed when I went on a trip to LA. So I lost a lot of things, including my backpack. And I definitely need a new backpack for when school starts. So we'll see what the poll says and we'll get a new one. Okay, even though the brown one got more votes, the blue one has more pockets and it's just more practical. So I'm gonna get the blue one. Okay, I am back home now with my new backpack. And while I'm unpackaging this, I'm gonna do some more questions. Next question is, what made you choose architecture? And did I have any other careers I wanted to study? Choosing architecture was a really last minute decision. I don't think I decided I wanted to do architecture until about junior year of high school. I was pretty STEM focused in high school, so I either wanted to do electrical engineering or CS. But my junior year of high school, I ended up taking AP computer science. I found it to be super boring, and I realized it was definitely not something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So I decided to look for other majors to apply to. I wanted to choose something that I thought would challenge me in a lot of different ways. Not just math, just science, or programming or something like that. Something a bit more creative, but also practical at the same time. Honestly, I had no idea what architecture was like before I decided to go into it. So I think I got kind of lucky that I do like it now. So yeah. The next question was, do I ever regret it? I would say no. There's definitely times when architecture school gets hard, but overall, I think I'm really lucky to have found a major that I actually care about and something that I'm willing to put those long hours into. I wouldn't say I regret it. So the next question is how I applied to architecture school, my stats, my portfolio, and why I chose the college I go to, which is Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, New York. And this is where I differ from most other architecture students. Most architecture students are a little bit more artsy in high school, and they will have built a portfolio before applying to college. Me, I was a pretty STEMI kid. I'll put my stats right here. 
I didn't do much art in high school, so I didn't have a portfolio to submit to colleges. I was pretty late in deciding what I wanted to do, but I knew that I still wanted to do architecture. So what I did was I literally looked up, I'll give you a little demonstration right now. I literally looked up top 10 colleges for architecture in the United States. And one thing about architecture is that you have to know, there are a lot of good master program colleges out there, but if you know you want to do architecture going into undergraduate in the United States, you should go for a five-year bachelor program because it gives you the same qualifications as doing a four-year bachelor's and then a master's in architecture. So I looked at the top 10 undergraduate architecture schools in the US and I only applied to colleges that I could apply to without a portfolio. And that ended up only being three colleges. <laughs> Cal Poly Slow, Pratt Institute, where I go now, and Cooper Union. At both Cal Poly Slow and Pratt Institute, you can submit SAT scores instead of a portfolio, and Cooper Union sends a studio test to students during the college admissions process. I did not do well on that. Honestly, rushed it a lot because I didn't really want to go to Cooper Union because it is a super small school. So then I got into Cal Poly Slow and Pratt Institute, and I eventually ended up deciding to go to Pratt because it's in New York, it's more diverse, and I just thought it would suit me a bit better. My route to doing architecture was a lot different than most people. If you know early on that you want to do architecture, you should definitely take the time to build a portfolio because it will give you more options for where you can apply. I was just a little bit late to that, so my options were a bit limited. Okay, going on, going on. Next question is, what are some of the pros and cons of architecture? One of the cons is obviously that architecture is the sleepiest major that you can choose. In architecture school, there's more focus on critique rather than traditional tests. And to a lot of people, critiques can feel a lot more personal. A professor is judging you based on your abilities rather than a score that you receive on a test. And things aren't as set in stone as a STEM field because a lot more of it is creative and design focus. Another con is that coming out of college, the salary for architects is pretty low. You'll have to have a lot more experience in the field in order to see higher pay. But pros for architecture, I think obviously it's a super interesting career. It involves a lot of different disciplines. So you'll be able to learn about math, history, literature for architecture, laws, economics, construction, graphic design, about a lot of different things. I think the biggest pro of architecture is that it is a super interesting field. It's definitely not something that you go into if you want an easy career or just want to make a lot of money, but I do think it's one of the most inspiring and interesting careers out there. That's all for now. I'm going to answer some more questions later. Thank you, Grammarly, for sponsoring this video. Hi guys, so as I mentioned, I will be a third year as an architecture major this upcoming fall. And in architecture, there are many times during the year where you'll be running on little to no sleep, but you'll still be required to write papers, respond to emails, and make verbal presentations for your projects. When I get tired, I find it hardest to continue to think of good ideas and catch all the small grammar mistakes and typos that I can make when writing. Here's an example of me using Grammarly's AI features to provide suggestions for this architecture history paper, which I wrote about the architects June Jordan and the Smithsons. For creating verbal and written presentations for a project, here's me using Grammarly to brainstorm thesis statements and an outline for a presentation. And if you don't like any of the initial responses from Grammarly, you can easily paraphrase and rewrite to fit your needs. Grammarly is free to use and to try out for anybody. It's funny because I actually use Grammarly to respond to Grammarly's emails to me about this sponsorship. Grammarly is definitely a must-have for all students. Sign up for a free account at this link. And if you want access to extra features, you can get 20% off of Grammarly Premium. Thank you, Grammarly, for sponsoring this video. And now I will get back to answering more questions. I'm about to go to the library with my little sister. Of okay, hi guys. We are at the library right now. The first question is, if I could go back to first year, would I do anything differently? And do I have any advice for younger students or freshmen? It's very easy for students to compare themselves to one another in a very toxic way. For me, because I didn't come from an art background and I go to an art school now, first year was really hard for me because I felt very out of place and I felt like I didn't have the art skills to keep up with everyone else. I think what you realize is that everyone has different strengths. So that would be my number one piece of advice. Focus on yourself and don't compare yourself to other people in the program. The culture within studios can get very competitive in a very toxic way. So you want to make sure that you don't let yourself get too lost in that. So another 
piece of advice is to make good friends. Another piece of advice is to get a good laptop. I also saw some questions about this. In some programs, you start digitally earlier than other programs, but at some point you will have to heavily use a computer. So you want a laptop with a good CPU, you want one with a good GPU, and you also want a laptop with a lot of RAM. I think most people have a laptop that either has 32 gigs or 64 is super good. And I'm not an expert on laptops, but I would just say whatever laptop you're getting, just make sure it has good specs. And another piece of tech advice to freshmen is that you should try to back up everything online. Personally, I use Google Drive to back up everything, and that saved me so many times when I've had a computer fail. And just recently when all my stuff got stolen, it's very helpful to have everything backed up online. Another common question that I saw was what should high schoolers that want to go into architecture be studying? And do you need to know how to draw? You should definitely be trying to make a portfolio in high school. I didn't do that, but it's definitely better. But I would say most of the classes that you take in architecture school, you only really need a standard level of high school knowledge in order to do well in those college classes. So just focus on what you're studying in high school and make sure you're learning in high school. As far as drawing, in architecture, drawing is all about clearly conveying an idea. It's a lot more technical. Practicing drawing in plan and section is super important for architecture. Plan cut is basically, if I cut through this, it would be a horizontal plane and you would see a circle looking down and that's a plan. If you cut horizontally through the cup, it would make a cut that's the outline of wherever you cut through. Maybe I'll put a really scuffed drawing on the side here. Practicing drawing in section and plan is super important for being able to read architectural drawings and visualizing what it looks like to go from a 3D object, a 3D building, to a 2D drawing. Another question I got was, do professors teach you architecture programs? From my experience, I know that a lot of schools will offer baseline tutorials so that you kind of know how to use the programs for the bare essentials of what you need. But I will say that because so many of the architecture programs are so complex, there are a lot of different commands, a lot of different settings that you can learn that will make you a lot faster than what you can learn from the baseline tutorials at school. So to become proficient at architecture programs, you will definitely have to do a bit of studying outside of school. And that's also where making good friends comes in handy because you guys can share different tips and tricks for all the programs that you have to know. Shout out to all my friends who have helped me so far. And related to that is how do I balance having good friends during school? If you watch any of my vlogs, you'll see that I'm alone a lot of the time. I think one of the biggest things about balancing friends in school is that you have to make sure that your friends know that you're not blowing them off because you don't want to hang out with them, but because you're busy and good friends will understand that. Next question is what kind of music do I listen to when studying? I put my Spotify in the description for all my vlogs. Honestly, I'm a little weird. I listen to the exact same music that I listen to when I'm walking around as when I'm studying. I do have a very specific playlist that I use for studio work. It's called Wake Up, Wake Up, Wake Up. And that playlist has a whole bunch of upbeat songs that I listen to to help me stay in the zone and stay focused when I'm doing architecture work. You can get away with playing a lot more distracting music when you're doing architecture work because you're not always reading something or memorizing something. It's more of background music for the task that you're doing. Next question was, how do I stay without being stressed for long periods of time? And how do I stay motivated when I'm very tired. And I think motivation and stress all depends on how you're viewing and how you're approaching school. If you're kind of in the academic validation and grind mindset of school, you are going to burn out. So I do think you really have to be approaching school because you want to do it. You really have to be invested in what you're learning because otherwise when things get hard, even if you stick things out, it's going to tear at you in the end. Really making sure that you're genuinely invested in what you're doing in school is the best way to not burn out and the best way to stay motivated. I'll also say that I don't think you should rely on motivation to get things done because there are definitely going to be days when you don't want to get out of bed, when you don't really want to open the textbook, when you don't really want to open your laptop to get to work. And it's more about discipline and doing it just because you know you love the topic, because you love the major, because you love what you're doing, not because you love the specific task or assignment that you're doing. Another question is how I approach time management. Last year, I used a very strict schedule for my calendar. I would plan out every hour of every single day. I think in some ways that worked, but I think this year I'm gonna do a bit more of a relaxed schedule. When you strictly plan things out hour by hour, it does help you know exactly what you wanna do, but I do think it can be a bit unrealistic if you don't account for buffer time. Whether you're gonna plan things super strictly or not, you should always make sure to include buffer time just so that you're ready for if things take a bit longer than necessary, if you're doing things a bit slower a certain day, if something random comes up like a technical difficulty or a personal issue, you should always have a bit of buffer time in your schedule. I would say you never want to max yourself out. That would be my biggest piece of advice for time management. And yeah, the rest of the questions are a bit more casual. First one is, will I ever go back to streaming? And will I ever return to Genshin? And the answer to that is probably not. I don't know how many of you have seen my Twitch, but this is my Twitch. 
I streamed Genshin for a little bit of time and it was really fun at the time. But I do think that now I'm not really in a place in life where that's something that I want to spend my time on. So I'm really sorry to everyone that watched the Genshin videos, but I do not think I'll be going back to that. The next question is, am I Christian? And the answer is yes. You've probably seen in a few of my vlogs. I try to go to church every Sunday and I am Presbyterian Christian, which is a denomination of Protestant Christianity. I'm oh, sorry, can I borrow your phone now? Thanks. I took my little sister's phone for this. My favorite Bible verse is Ecclesiastes 3. And in short, it says that there is a time for everything, a season for every activity under the heavens. He has made everything beautiful in its time. And I think I actually put this in the description of one of my Spotify playlists, but I think that verse is just a good reminder that no matter what season of life you're in, no matter how stressed you might be with school, no matter how busy you might be overloading yourself with work, no matter how tired you might be, no matter how unorganized you might feel in life, there's something beautiful that you can find within any season of life. So I think it's just a really good reminder to keep yourself grounded in the season of life that you're in. And next question is, what is my favorite thing to eat after a long day? Honestly, I cook most of my meals at home and most of them are the exact same. But I'll say that my favorite food to eat to just comfort me would be Harbitang. It's a warm Korean soup. I like to eat that especially after a long day during the winter time and it just kind of warms me up. And the next question is, what are my favorite places in New York? Just recently, this summer, I found this really cool chai cafe called The Chai Spot. Honestly, I should be gatekeeping it, but that place is really cool. It has an indoor seating where you're actually supposed to take your shoes off to sit down, and the chai is really yummy too. I also really like the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens. Those are really pretty. I went one time with my sister. And then for a restaurant, I would say Chef Katsu Brooklyn. It's a small Japanese katsu restaurant pretty close to my school studio, and that is my go-to place for a meal that I want when I'm near studio. Yeah, just really yummy, really yummy. And the workers are super nice. Another question is, have I had any past part-time jobs? In high school, I worked at the Science Museum of Minnesota. And more recently, I worked as a part-time worker at my harabuji at my grandpa's sushi restaurant. That was last summer. That was pretty fun. Okay, now for the juicy questions. I got a few questions about dating in college. I've had two girlfriends, one during freshman year and one during sophomore year. Without going too far into details, essentially both relationships did not work out because I was too busy with school. I do think that dating is one of the hardest things to balance with school, and I definitely have not found a perfect balance for it. You'll definitely have to communicate with whoever you're dating how much time you have. I'm not necessarily looking to date. I would be open to it if anything happened, but I'm not currently actively looking for a girlfriend. With that being said, another question was what is my ideal type? And I think there are a few things that are really non-negotiables for me. One is that I would want someone who is mature, but someone who's also easygoing. I think it's so easy to get very caught up in the stressors of school. And while I do want to date someone who keeps school in mind, I don't want to date someone who lets school consume them. Someone who's easygoing, but also focused on their passions and dedicated to what they're doing. And another thing is that I would want to date someone who's Christian. Besides those, I feel like I am pretty open generally. You never know. And then last few questions are, how do I do my hair? Right now, I have a bit of a perm. I get a Korean perm, so it makes it a little wavier. Normally my hair is super straight, but as far as styling it, I don't do anything to it. I kind of brush it up when it's wet after I shower and that's about it. And then how good am I at cooking salmon now? Um, honestly, I'm not that good. I think my salmon is good enough for me to eat and that's about it. But yeah, that was all of the questions that I saw. Thank you everyone for taking the time to leave the questions. If you have any more, you can comment it down below. Thank you for watching guys. Stay tuned for more school vlogs coming up soon.